Good morning, welcome to Madeira Farms. It is nine o'clock in the morning and I have, I have all of my loaves pretty much baked. So today I'm just gonna talk to you guys about getting customers, building confidence, and if you're a stay-at-home mom and you're trying to do this, how to navigate those waters because I found it to be very, very challenging and I was feeling a lot of mom guilt. So we're gonna talk all the things and I think this is really gonna help you as far as mindset goes when it comes to starting a micro bakery. If you don't feel like you're good enough, if you don't feel like your starter is good enough, your bread's not good enough, so many ways to conquer that as you go. So first things first, let's talk about getting customers. How do you wanna get those customers and who is your customer? Your customer is gonna be someone who really appreciates an artisan loaf, someone who really appreciates home baked goods and they're willing to pay the price for it. You're always going to have people that say, I'm not paying $10 for a loaf of bread when I can buy one for $3 at the store. And that is not your customer. So don't try and please those people by bringing down your prices. Just let it go. It's not your customer. So you're going to want to make sure that you're finding and seeking out the customers that you want. And the way to do that is one marketplace. Facebook Marketplace is a good way to connect with people that are local to you and that are searching for things that you're willing to offer. I always post on Facebook because my friends and family want to see me succeed. And anyone who's on Facebook that is my friend, um, they're willing to share and they're willing to support me. So those are the people that you want to really connect with. The other thing that you can do to really start getting your customers is, and I'm talking retail customers, is to start posting to different mom groups or different groups on Facebook. So we have like a mom of Erie entrepreneur group. There's a couple different mom groups that um, want their kids to eat better food. And that can be like crunchy moms or any of the moms who really care about what their kids eating. Focus on those those groups of people, anyone who is into like herbalism, all of those people are the ones that you wanna like wrap your arms around and pull them tight. Another great way to market your bread is to post or make pamphlets or business cards and put them up at local businesses. Any local business is gonna wanna support another local business. So I shake your hand, you shake mine, I scratch your back, you scratch my back, however you wanna say it. That is a great way for you to connect with people who want to support you. Focusing on getting wholesale customers is a whole different ballgame. If you want to grab a wholesale customer, you really have to get out there and pound the pavement. You want to talk to businesses. You want to see where, where do you want your products? And a good way to do this, sorry, baby is right here. Um, a good way to do that is looking at other businesses that you would love to partner with. So we have a local dairy that sells raw milk and they're a really big name in our area. And so what I did is I went to their website and I looked and saw where do they sell their milk? And I'm gonna go target those businesses because my bread is similar to that category. Now it's obviously not dairy, but it is a local product, it's handmade, and it's gonna be a little bit of a higher price point. So I'm not trying to sell to people who are going to the dollar store. You know what I mean? Not that going to the dollar store is bad. I go there all the time to get things, but that's just not my customer for my business. So that is a way to set, to get wholesale customers. You're gonna to wanna to pound the pavement. You're gonna to wanna to do your research, kind of look at who you wanna be. Like if you were to go in a store and you were looking at the shelf, you'd probably grab raw milk and if you saw sourdough bread, that would like resonate with you because you're that kind of customer. So that's that's what I did and I think it's working really, really well. So that is my best advice for getting to people that you want to serve. The next thing is going to be conquering the mindset that you're not good enough. And trust me, I have been there, I still do it all the time. Like why are people buying bread from me? I have no idea what I'm doing. And every single time that someone compliments my bread, I still am like in awe, building confidence to go do these things, to really push your product, to really talk to businesses, 
to get the to get your bread inside their stores it's hard it's really hard and i don't want to downplay it at all because i struggled for a long time getting the confidence to go and talk to a business to say hey i'm making this and i think it would be great in your store can we partner together link arms and help each other out so one way to build that confidence is to start really small. I always talk about my bread club because I think that has helped me build my confidence. Even if my loaves aren't superstar loaves and they're not great, I'm still giving them to my bread club and they, no matter what, they like it. It doesn't matter if it's not the most beautiful thing in the world. And that kind of builds my confidence because we are typically so hard on ourselves. If I have a loaf of bread and I'm like, oh gosh, I don't really love it. Like people who don't bake bread aren't going to know the difference. They're going to think like this is the most amazing thing because it's handmade. It tastes great and it looks better than a store bought bread, even if it's not your best bread. So you just have to push yourself to do one little thing. So even if it's um, talking to or giving free bread to your neighbors, that is a huge help. If you start giving a loaf here and there to someone and say, hey, would you try this for me? And just let me know what you think. And then they say, oh my God, that was the best thing ever. Can I have another one? Can I have another one? And then you start to build that confidence in yourself. Same with your family. If you have family members who are gonna be brutally honest, those are the best people to reach out to because they're going to be the ones who are going to tell you like it was a little raw or it wasn't the best maybe try this or i like this flavoring and they're going to give you awesome ideas that you can run with i personally and this is exactly what i did is i just put it out there i was like you know what i want to do this and i'm going to start making bread and as i'm making it and giving it to people i know i'm going to feel Sorry, <laughs> baby's playing. I know I'm gonna feel um, a little nervous giving them a loaf of bread that I made myself because I just don't have the confidence yet, but I'm gonna give it to them and I'm gonna say, what did you think? And we're gonna go from there. And that's exactly what I did. And I am telling you, I have not had one person tell me like, Ugh, it wasn't very good. I've literally had every single person. I'm like, please be honest because I'm trying to grow and improve. And they were all like, this is great. Maybe add a little bit more pepperoni or, you know, I didn't really taste the lemon in this loaf. Maybe add more. Perfect. That's what I want. I want that feedback. And you have to be, you have to be confident in yourself to handle feedback. And that's something that takes time. And you have to be honest with yourself. Like you are not the best, but you're working to get there. And it's fine that you get feedback that's helping you because the next time you give out that love, you'll have a little more confidence that you're not gonna get the same feedback and you just keep doing that and you, it snowballs. And then you become confident enough to go to a wholesaler or to go to a retail store and try and sell them wholesale. Um, you have all of these five-star reviews on your business so that you feel good enough to go do that. And it takes time and you just have to push yourself to do that. And the last thing that we're gonna talk about is being a mom and running a micro bakery or in any kind of business, it's hard. And your mom guilt all day is telling you that you should be taking care of your babies, that you should be playing with them, that you need to go outside more. And you're trying to establish some sort of business for whatever reason. That could be to bring your husband home from work so that he doesn't have to work a corporate job. That could be just a little bit more financial freedom. Whatever it is, um, there's a why behind it. And once you find that why, and it is so true and clear to you, it'll make it easier for you to understand that you're gonna have to make some sort of sacrifice. Whether that be your in-laws watch your kid once or twice a week, or you have someone come over and help you while you're baking or whatever it is, it's not bad. You're still home 89, 99% of the time with your kids. You're not in a corporate office. You're not working 40 hours a week without your kids. And that took some time for me to really wrap my head around because I still feel guilty some days that I am, what are you doing? I still feel guilty some days where I'm in the kitchen baking and the kids are playing in the living room by themselves. And yesterday, actually, I had this aha moment where I was like, I am not just a stay-at-home mom. I am a working mom trying to build a business. Once I changed that title in my head, 
then I, <laughs> I really started to feel a little bit more free on what I was doing. I was able to let my kids play while I was baking. And I think that's something that we as moms find hard to do. When we get the freedom to be a stay-at-home mom and our husbands are working so that we can stay home and hang out with our kids, um, we, we kind of hold ourselves to that. Instead of saying, this is a transition period where yes, I'm home with our kids, but I'm also building something so that my husband can come home or so that we have some financial freedom. And I think really changing your mindset will help you a whole bunch when it comes to being that primary parent, staying home with the kids and also trying to build a business. In the end, it's totally worth it. Hope you guys find this valuable. If there's any way that I can help, um, please let me know. You can always send me a message over on Instagram, leave a comment. I am more than happy to help you if you're troubleshooting anything as far as your bread goes, or if you have questions about pricing or whatever it is, we're happy to help. Hope you guys have an awesome day. We will catch you in the next one. Bye friends. Say bye.